Hello again. So today we're going to look at recurring decimals and converting them into fractions. Now let's do a little bit of background first. So the first thing is what is a recurring decimal and how do I know if it can be converted into a fraction form or not? So let's look at some examples here. So the first one I've got is 0 0.232323. Now that um, would be recurring because the 2323 repeats itself, therefore recurring. If there is a pattern and if there is a recurring decimal, it can be converted into a fraction. So yes, that can be converted into a fraction and therefore it would be considered a rational number. Second one, 2.17217. Ah, that's also recurring. 172 is repeating. So that is also able to be converted into a fraction and therefore it would be considered a rational number. Third one. 6.25601279. Now, if I look at that carefully, sorry, carefully, there's no pattern in that, um, and it keeps keeps on going, keeps on, but there's no, it's not recurring, there's no re repetition happening, so that cannot be converted into a fraction, and that would therefore be an irrational number, irrational number it cannot be converted into a fraction. Then the next number, three point one four one five nine two six. There's no pattern there, it doesn't recur, so therefore that also cannot be converted into a rational number or into a fraction. Therefore it is irrational. Two irrational ones. wonder if any of you noticed that that actually is pi. And pi is a number that exists, it's a constant number, but it's irrational because it can't be converted to a fraction. The closest approximation is 22 over 7, and sometimes we use that. But it's an irrational number. It cannot be written as a fraction. Now, let's look at the trick as to how to convert each of these recurring decimals into fractions. That's what we're going to do now. Let's look at our first example. So we want to convert 0 0.323232, which is a recurring decimal, into a fraction. Now, the first thing that we always do is, whatever the, the recurring decimal is, we let that equal x. Always. Irrespective of the amount of digits that are recurring, etc., etc. So let 0.323232 equal x. Now the little trick that we do is to help us get to the correct fraction is we multiply it by 100. Now because the 323232 is recurring, we multiply it by 100. And we always remember multiply both sides by 100. So if I multiply this by 100, I'm going to end up with 32. 0.3232 and so we go because multiplying by 100 remember makes it bigger by 100 we move it the decimal two places and on the right hand side 100 times x is 100x and the next little trick that we always do is we subtract the two um, equations so here I'm going to subtract and I'm going to work upwards so 100x take away remember there's a one in front 100x take away 1x is 99x. And on this side here, I'm going to subtract here as well. So when I subtract the decimals, have a look. They're exactly the same. So when I subtract the decimals there, they essentially fall away. And I'm left with 32 take away 0, which is 32. Now I want to solve for x. So x is equal to, in this case, to get rid of the 99, I divide both sides by 99. So this is going to be 32 divided by 99. So now 0.323232 written as a fraction is 32 over 99. Go and check it on your calculator. If you go 32 divided by 99 and you convert to decimals, you will get that answer. Beautiful trick. We just always multiply by 100, subtract the 2 and we end up. And 32 over 99, we need to check is there a number that goes into both of those. And I've already checked there isn't. You always try and simplify in maths if you can. Always. Example 2. Now we need to convert 0.4262626 into a fraction. Now there is a recurring decimal there. 26 repeats itself. So once again, always, the number we, the recurring decimal we wanted to convert into a fraction, let that equal x. Starting point. Now what do we multiply both sides by? Because the 26 is recurring, 
there's two digits that are recurring, we're once again going to multiply both sides by 100. What happens if we multiply both sides by 100? Decimal moves two places, so this is going to become 42.626262, etc. And this multiplied by 100 becomes 100x. Next step, subtract. Always subtract. 100x minus 1x is going to be 99x. Let's see what happens on this side here. Now, we need to look carefully. If I put these underneath each other and I want to subtract, we can see something interesting here is that those decimals are all the same. So if I subtract that, subtract that, these here are all going to disappear because it's like going 2 minus 2, 6 minus 6, 2 minus 2. So that part of the recurring decimal has gone and we are left with this. So now we do the subtraction. Remember, it's going to be that, subtract that. 6 minus 4 is going to be 2. 42 minus 2, sorry, 42 minus 0 is just 42. So now I'm solving for x. The rule is, remember, we divide both sides by 99, divide by 99. So that divided by 99 is gone. It's just 1. And then this will be 42.2 divided by 99. That's not in simplest form in maths. Decimals involved. Uh, so why, how do we get rid of that decimal point 2? We just want to make it bigger at the top by 10 and bigger at the bottom by 10. We want to basically eliminate the decimal, so we've got to multiply by 10, and that would give us 4, 2, 2 over 99 times 10, which is 990. So that is that initial recurring decimal as a fraction, but we always need to check if it's in simplest form. Now, I can see straight away that 2 goes into the top and into the bottom. So if we divide this by 2, I'm going to get 2, 1, 1 over, and I think I'm running out of space, 4, 9, 5. So let's just put it at the top here. So final answer, x is equal to 2, 1, 1 divided by 495. Go and check on your calculator, see if that in fact is true. So that recurring decimal as a fraction is 2, 1, 1 over 495 in its simplest form, always in maths get it down into its simplest form. One more example. Okay, now for our third example. Let 3.27197197719 equal x. Remember, that's always our starting point. Now, the recurring decimals here are 719, 719, 719. So there are three that are recurring. And if that's the case, don't multiply it by 100. I've got to multiply it by 1,000. Because essentially I want to get rid of those recurring decimals and there's three of them. So I've got to multiply both sides by 1000. The right hand side now will become 1000x. And the left hand side, we multiply by 1000, we move the decimal three places. So my number is going to be 3271.2. Nine seven one. So we go on. Once I've multiplied by a thousand, next step is to subtract on both sides. So if I subtract here, one thousand minus one thousand x minus one x will be nine hundred ninety nine x. And on this side here, it's important that we line up the decimals in the correct places. That would be the tens, hundreds, thousands. Now, if we subtract these, you'll notice that from here, these are the same. So if I subtract, they will disappear. And what I'm left with here is 9 take away 2 is going to be 7. 1, we have to borrow. 11 take away 3. 11 take away 3 is going to be 8. 6 take away 0 is going to be 6. And then we've got 3, 2. So almost the final step. To solve for x, I'm going to divide both sides by 999. So I'm going to get 3268.7 divided by 999. Not in its simplest form, we've still got a decimal, so we need to get rid of that 0.7. So I just times the top by 10 and the bottom by 10. 
So my final answer is going to be 3, 2, 6, 8, 7 over 9, 9, 9, 0. Because remember, I've multiplied it by 10. So now, this long recurring decimal as a fraction is 32,687 over 9990. That is the fact. I've tried it. You try and simplify it. Does it become simpler? No, it doesn't. But if I divide that into each other and I convert it to a decimal, it's going to give me back my original. Now, to summarize. So, to finally summarize here, whenever you see recurring decimals, you want to convert it to a fraction. We let the original question equal to x, and then we've got to multiply it by a certain number and then subtract. Now, the number that we multiplied by varies depending on how many decimals recur. So let's look at these three examples here. Point one, 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 one. This one, once it's equal to x, we'd have to multiply both sides by 10 because there's every there's only one decimal that's recurring, so we multiply by 10. In this one here, the recurring decimals, there are two of them. So here we would multiply both sides by 100. And in this example here, remember this notation? That means that if that little dot's on the top of the 1 and on top of the 3, it means that, that those three digits and everything in between are also repeating itself or recurring. So this would be 67.123123123, etc. And because there's three recurring digits in this particular example, this one, we would have to multiply both sides by 1,000. Okay, so it's actually easy peasy lemon squeezy. There we go. Go and practice some. There's lots in your textbook, I'm sure. Um, there's lots that can be done. Good luck.